I mentioned in the previous episode that things are going to start picking up and moving at a bit more of a pace and I'll tell you what, I wasn't wrong. If you're wondering why I'm completely overexposed by all this lovely sun, it is because the underfloor insulation has started been going in. So we currently have this blue radon barrier, which is this layer right here, obviously, because it's blue. Uh, this, right, okay, so before I start explaining it, let's go back, way, 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 way back, when I built the building and I installed this stuff. A lot of people kicked off because they were saying, what are you doing leaving tails hanging out, yada, yada, yada. It's because this connects to it. There's some blue tape under here, double-sided tape that sticks that down. So these two are attached and this spans, as you can see, it's running around the rim, the entire of the building, because if you can see out there, there's a little ridge there. And on the other side of that ridge, there used to be a landfill site. Now it's, it hasn't been used in a number of years. There's like little, um, little vents that come out of the ground that, um, is where like, I think it's the methane you're supposed to expel from. And apparently this ground is all soaked in methane. So I've had to have a radion barrier to stop the methane coming in the house. Even the architect said, this is probably never gonna happen, but we had to put it in to go and uh, get it approved through planning. So we've had to put this extra barrier in. Well, it's not the end of the world. It's a little bit expensive, but such is life. These things had to happen. That is what this blue stuff is and this blue stuff here. So as you can see here, this stuff, a bit of Queen, th Queen whatever it's called, Kingspan, Celotex, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we've got 100 mil here at the moment. Now, if we look in the back garden, I'll tell you what, I, I'm never, oh, cool, that sun is right in my mince pies. Let me put my old sunglasses back on. Crikey, that's bright. I'm never going to get tired of this view. Well, these doors at least, the view's going to get significantly better. Uh, but my point being is that is all the 100 mil that I told you about before. This stuff got delivered today, that's 75. So we're having 75 mil additional on top of this because I want to get that nice clean finish here. So it is, it's gonna be another 75 mil of insulation and then 75 mil of um, screed and then the tiles are gonna go on top of that. Now the guys are gonna come back tomorrow and this is all, basically this entire building, bottom floor is gonna be done and it's gonna be ready for the plumber to come and fit all the underfloor heating. So I thought I'd give you a quick little show of uh, like in, the, in between uh, before I come back to you tomorrow when it's done and then from there onwards. But, do you wanna see a little secret? Not necessarily a little secret, a little bit of a foreshadow. Do you wanna see the tiles that I've picked to go in here? Have a look at these. So this is the tile that I've picked. It is a 10 mil porcelain tile. Um, originally, I did want something along the lines of like a limestone, but natural stone is a little bit pricey and the upkeep, it, it ends up being more expensive. You've got to faff around with sealing it and stuff like that. But I like the, the color of it. Like the, it looks like it's pitted and been filled in with grout, but it, it comes up, it looks really good. And on the edges, it's got that slightly tumbled look to it, which I like. The only downside is I can't have it outside unless I concrete this entire area and basically just put them on as if you would do normal tiles. Now I don't want to do that. I'm probably going to have Indian sandstone, like a similar color, like a gray Indian sandstone out here. Um, I don't want to go too crazy with the price out here. So Indian sandstone is probably the best the best idea and you can't get Indian sandstone to go inside. I think that's going to come up quite nice. It's going to have a nice uh, a white white grout, a nice skinny white grout and just sort of brick pattern it throughout the whole, the entire building. And then hopefully I can do this. Cool, that is a lot heavier than I thought have this as close to there as possible sort of around about there like a two or three mil gap on this side cool that's heavy i'm gonna put that down yeah i'll have a two or three mil gap just below threshold so just enough room to get like a little bead of mastic along there or something like that so that should come up nicely so nice flush all the way through there and then on the outside we'll have like i said indian sandstone and I would like to not grout it, but have it uh, have the joints in white and maybe try and squeeze them down to like a five mil joint and then have it in white to kind of match. So it's similar and brick bond it out here as well. Not have that sort of randomized pattern with Indian sandstone. Anyway, so that's, that's that. What I'll do is I'll leave you for today. I'll flash forward you to tomorrow when either there's some work going on or been done and yeah, see how it all looks. So I'll see you in the morning.
Right, so it's been a couple of days since I last saw you. Uh, in the meantime, I have built a little bit of brickwork here. I had to build this section up as you saw a minute ago because the insulation from the floor was there. So when we pour the screed in, the last thing you want is all the screed to pour out the front. So I dusted off the old trail, which I haven't used in a while, and laid a few bricks here. And also, I don't know if you can tell in here, the plumbers are here and they're putting the underfloor heating in. Let me just quickly show you around. All right, first off, I'll show you what's happening with this damp. So we've got the membrane on the top. Under here is 175 mil of foil-backed insulation. I commonly just call it Celotex, but foil-backed insulation. And then that is all sat on top of that radon barrier, which is the blue, which I showed you briefly uh, the other day. That is all insulated up nice and perfect. And then everything has to be watertight because we're having liquid screed poured throughout the whole of this. Um, so they've had to go around and tape up all the edges for all of the uh, for the membrane so that none of this liquid pulls through. And as you can see, we've got the plumbers doing their business and putting in all the underfloor heating. Have a look at this tool. Check this out. So what the plumbers were using there was like a staple gun to staple all these pipes down all over the place. Oh yeah, and by the way, it's been another couple of days since I made that little bit there. Um, so what they're doing is they're shooting out these like staples. And basically what that does, as you can see down here, is it staples straight through the membrane and just locks it down to the floor so it doesn't move around all over the place. And have a look at that. So basically it's all done, all finished, all completed. Um, it has been a day and a half or so since I last saw you, like two seconds ago. And they've also put this around the edge, which is, it's like an expansion joint that goes all the way around the whole edge of the building um, or the ground floor or wherever they're gonna screed. If you're wondering why there's no piping down here or down here, that is where the kitchen goes. So there's no point putting any underfloor heat in there because you're not gonna ever stand there because the kitchen's there. And also where the stairs are going, um, we're having it, um, basically the stairs are changing. Uh, and also this is where the base of the stairs is gonna be. So obviously there's no point in having underfloor heat in there because there's gonna be a set of stairs there. Um, I'll quickly show you the two things that I find most interesting about this. One is the manifold. You briefly saw it uh, earlier as matey was, matey was doing it. They've noted on here, like we've got study, um, I don't know what that, what does that say? Dining, no, that's dining, living, dining, kitchen, etc., etc. And what they've done is they've used this machine here to pressurize the whole system. So if for some reason someone comes through when they're screening it with a nail in their boot and it hits this and there's a, there's a leak, you'll know about it pretty bloody sharp because there'll be water going absolutely everywhere. So I found that very interesting. That's the manifold. I've never seen that before. Saying that, I've never had underfloor heating in any of my houses before. I'm gonna put these staples back. Saying that, I don't think I've ever put underfloor, in, underfloor heating in ever or been on a job where they've done it. Being a bricklayer, you don't generally get a chance to see things like this being done. You build the house and you, you, you rack off to the next job. So it's very interesting seeing this. And now this is something that I, there was a specific request from my, that I asked my um, electrician that I wanted. So we're in the office now and I asked for some plug sockets to be put in the floor. Basically, let, let, let me explore. Here we go. We've got a double socket this side, like two, two sockets, and then we have an internet, an ethernet cable here. Now let me explain why. So we've got the plug sockets right here and basically what I'm gonna do is I've got an old Chesterfield desk that I plan on having right there so I can look out the window that you're sat directly in front of. And I don't really want any cables lying around all over the place. So the thing I think is just why don't you have it in the floor and have the cables hidden in your desk? Seems crazy not to. As you can see here, I have stuffed some Celotex in the boxes so that when we pour the screed in, it doesn't just go pouring into these boxes and end up filling them up with screed, which is not what we want. We want to put plug sockets in here. So Celotex comes in very handy there and just taped it down to make it nice and secure. And these are the wires out of the way so they're not lying on the floor. Perfect. Now I've got a bit of an obsession with Chesterfield. Well, I wouldn't say an obsession. I've got a, a fond liking towards them. I've never owned an actual Chesterfield. Uh, we've currently got a sofa that's from Next, which is in the same style, like the buttoned sofa. But I want like the Chesterfield desk, like the wooden desk with the green leather top. And then the, I think 
they're called a captain's chair, the one that twirls around like an office chair basically, but a Chesterfield. And also in this corner down here, I want like an armchair, a Chesterfield armchair, all green leather. Um, that's just, I like the sound of that with, with the wooden desk. Anyway, so that's why we've got the plug sockets in the floor so that I can have my Chesterfield and sit there, do me a bit of business, do me editing, do me whatever. And well, yeah, I'm, as you can see, I'm trying to walk in between these pipes. Now the plumber said, you can stand on them, but I don't want the bad luck of me. There might be a nail in my foot or something like that. And I'll stand on it, psh, water goes everywhere. Anyway, so everything is ready. Tomorrow morning, the guys come to do the screening. So if they are happy for me to film, I will film and show you exactly what goes into it. Um, if not, then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards and uh, yeah, go from there. So I will see you guys in two shakes of a lamb's tail. See you in a minute. Been a couple of days since the screen has gone down. I'm putting a few bits of stud work up, which basically I'm going to plaster straight over that window because I don't want it there anymore. <laughs> no, we're not really going to do that. God, that looked really, really weird if we did do that. Anyway, um, I didn't quite get a chance to say that when the, they did the screen, the the uh, little like um, what are they even called the little like forky weird chair looking things. These things here. Um, they put those out, they, they use a laser level to mark off all the little circle bits on there so to get it all perfectly level and then they go to that when they put the screed in. And I'll tell you what, it comes up absolutely beautiful. It's been about a week, give or take, since they actually put the screed in, so you can generally walk on it the next day, but I didn't really want to, so I thought I'd leave it a week. Um, I'll tell you, what, it's half tempting just to have it polished up and leave it like this for the flooring, but no, it's... Um, yeah, liquid screed, never used it before, never seen it being used before, and I'll tell you what, I wouldn't use anything else ever again, just purely because it just went in so quick, two hours and it was done. Oh yeah, and I saw this, like, remember me putting these in? I think there was a little bug or something in there, because we've got like, I don't know what this is. Yeah, I think it was a bit pissed there. They're just wriggling around the weirdest way, and then sort of going out the front door, or a snail or something. I don't, I don't really know what the hell was in there, which made a very interesting pattern nonetheless. Right, I'm gonna finish off doing what I'm doing here in preparation for the next video. Don't wanna to say too much, but very exciting by the time the next video is gonna be coming out. So I'm gonna jump on here, get this done, uh, and I'll leave it here for you guys today. Hope you've enjoyed today's video, and I will see you all in the next one. See ya.